Hello, I'm Adam Keelick, the principal attorney at the Keelick Law Firm in Bedford, Texas, where I help clients in the Dallas and Fort Worth area with employment law, family law, and other litigation needs. Today's video is going to address the question of whether the EEOC will file a lawsuit on your behalf if you filed a charge of discrimination with them. Uh, we'll talk briefly uh, about the answer to that question, and then we'll talk in more detail about the process from making an initial contact with the, the agency through uh, the decision whether they will file a lawsuit on your behalf or other things that may occur instead. And then third, we'll talk in more detail about uh, when the EEOC makes a decision to file a lawsuit on a charging party's behalf or um, what will make them pass on your case. So to answer the question uh, briefly up front, generally the agency does not file a lawsuit on a charge of discrimination that comes in their door. This is uh, due to a number of factors. The uh, investigation may decide or may uh, lead to the determination that uh, they're uncertain whether discrimination occurred or they may have to look at a decision that they believe discrimination occurred, but because of their policy objectives and their limited budget and the merits of the case, it doesn't make sense in this particular case to move forward on a lawsuit. But we'll talk about all of that stuff in more detail. First, let's talk about the process of going from your initial contact with the agency through the steps that will result in that decision. I will say up front that you may want to first consult with an employment attorney before you make any kind of contact with the, the EEOC. Um, this is because an attorney can help assess your claim, determine whether the EEOC is the right place for you to file a complaint, and if you are going to file a complaint with them, to make sure that your complaint is filed correctly with the right information that's going to help you out as much as possible. And of course, should you end up getting through that process and the EEOC decides they're not going to file a lawsuit on your behalf, you'll have an attorney who's been involved in your case, who understands the details, who has a relationship with you, who can move forward on a lawsuit on your own behalf. But when you, when you do make that first contact with the EEOC, you'll do that in one of two ways. If you have an attorney, your attorney will complete what is called a charge of discrimination. A charge of discrimination is the formal legal document that's filed with the agency that lays out information about you and your employer, as well as your specific claim of discrimination and a statement of the laws that you believe were violated through this unlawful discrimination. You'll sign it, your attorney will file it with the agency, and that will begin the uh, official process within the agency of moving forward on a complaint. If you don't have an attorney, your first step will be contacting the EEOC and an investigator will have you complete an intake form that will provide uh, or that will ask you for uh, all of the same information that will go into the charge of discrimination as well as some additional information that they'll use to begin their investigation. The investigator will put together the charge of discrimination, have you sign it, and that will also kick off the official process moving forward. So oftentimes, the first step that will, that will occur, or I should say in all cases, the first step that will occur is an, oper an offer to mediate. The EEOC will offer to provide mediation services if both sides will agree. This is voluntary, and oftentimes the parties do not agree to go through mediation. But if they agree to go through mediation, then uh, mediation will be scheduled in front of an EEOC mediator, and they will try to reach a voluntary settlement of the claims, and if such a settlement occurs, that will resolve the charge of discrimination, and the EEOC will take no further action from there. But if mediation fails, then the case or, or the charge will move forward to the investigation phase. In this case, it will be assigned to an investigator who will request information from both sides, um, particularly from the employer though, 
and try to make a determination about whether probable cause exists to prove that, or probable cause exists, that unlawful discrimination occurred. This investigation can sometimes take months. Um, they may request substantial information from the employer, depending upon the complexity of the case, and may go back multiple times to try to make a determination of probable cause one way or another. At the conclusion of the investigation, the EEOC will issue its finding about whether probable cause was found. If probable cause was not found, the EEOC will conclude its work there and issue what's called a right to sue letter. A right to sue letter is a letter that states the finding of the EEOC and that it is not moving forward with any further work on behalf of the charging party and gives the charging party a 90-day window to file a lawsuit on their own. This 90-day period begins the date that the, char that the uh, right to sue letter is received and then 90 days out from there. If a lawsuit is not filed during that period, then the charging party is not allowed to file a lawsuit, at least upon the, the federal laws that the EEOC is responsible for in federal court. There may still be action to take on other laws um, at the state or federal level, but that will cut off the charging party's opportunity to move forward uh, with anything that was involved within the, um, the discrimination complaints and the charge of discrimination. If the EEOC does find probable cause, instead of issuing that right to sue notice, it will move into their conciliation process. Conciliation uh, really is just a fancy way of saying a settlement process. It's an informal process in which the EEOC um, tries to work with the employer and normally the way the EEOC will try to um, find a settlement is to include two portions. One is a remedy specific to the charging party, whether that's putting them back in their job or paying out a sum of money. And then the other side of it is uh, asking the employer to agree to make certain changes to their policies or procedures to avoid similar discrimination from occurring in the future. If conciliation is, is acceptable to the charging party and everybody agrees to it, once that settlement is agreed to, that will also end the charge and everybody moves on. If, however, conciliation fails, then the EEOC will make its decision about whether to file a suit. If the EEOC declines to file a suit, they'll send that right to sue letter and step out of the, the uh, case. And then from there, just like before, the charging party will have that 90 day period to file a suit. If the EEOC does decide to file a suit, they'll move forward with filing a federal lawsuit on behalf of the charging party. If the charging party has an attorney or otherwise chooses to file a lawsuit on their own, they can file a lawsuit for, other, um, for claims under other federal laws and or state laws. And then that lawsuit can be combined with the EEOC's lawsuit and they can proceed from there uh, through litigation and either uh, reach a settlement at some point or take it to trial and let a judge or jury decide. So let's talk about um, the probability that the EEOC will accept the case um, for litigation and some of the factors that they consider in making that decision. And the truth is that the agency files lawsuits in a very small number of cases very few of the charges actually reach that phase within the EEOC. Most are dismissed either because there was a there was not a probable cause finding or because conciliation failed but the EEOC decided not to move forward with litigation and uh, stepped out of the case. But from time to time the EEOC does decide to move forward with a lawsuit and take the case on. So let's talk about some of the factors that they'll consider in making that decision. One factor that may be considered 
is the merits of the actual complaint. If the case is particularly um, difficult or if they feel like they found probable cause but a jury is unlikely to buy the case, then they may decide not to accept that particular case for litigation, let the, the charging party take their chance with a private attorney and move forward on their own. But by and large, uh, one of the biggest, or, or really that decision comes down to the policy objectives of the EEOC and how a particular charge uh, that could be brought forward through litigation fits into those policy objectives and of course the budgetary uh, capacity of the agency to take that case on through litigation. And the reality is the EEOC has a very limited budget and so even if they wanted to take on every case that they found probable cause, it would be impractical because they don't have the budget or the staff to take every case to trial. So they really have to think about how to use their budget in a way that maximizes value for taxpayers. Um, and so to do that, they have specific policy objectives that they'll follow in making that decision. And those policy objectives are often dictated by the White House. And so if you look across uh, the past two presidents, you do see some differences in the policy objectives of the agency specifically as it relates to uh, their litigation practice. Under the Bush administration, the EEOC had a very limited budget, and so they really had a very narrow focus on the types of cases that they, that they took on. Um, and so we didn't see very much litigation on their behalf, and certainly um, the litigation that they, they chose to move forward with uh, tended to be cases that were more straightforward in which they were really just taking the law as it is and not um, not taking anything that might be too questionable or might in some way expand protections for employees. When we look at the Obama administration, we see a shift in focus. Actually, uh, there were two shifts that occurred within the Obama administration. Early in the Obama administration, the EEOC really focused on class actions. And the thought there was, uh, these are the cases that often have the biggest impact, that can do the most, and so the money should be spent in a, a utilitarian manner so that the most people can benefit from it. And so they bring class actions under the idea that first of all, you've got a large number of plaintiffs that are individually affected by the case. But second, those large class action cases often tend to be the cases in which uh, areas of law can be clarified or shaped. Uh, later on, we see the EEOC shift their policy objectives away from the class action towards a focus on emerging discrimination issues and uh, shaping new law, uh, case law specifically, around discrimination issues. So um, perhaps rather than taking big class actions and well-settled areas of law, they're taking on uh, unanswered questions in discrimination. Uh, in particular, they've taken on a lot of uh, transgender cases or they've moved forward on those transgender cases that maybe in the past they would have uh, skipped on. Um, of the cases that I've seen, they are not class action suits. Oftentimes they involve one single employee and that's un that shouldn't be too surprising because often um, most workplaces have a very small number of openly transgendered employees. And so those issues when they arise usually arise about one particular individual. So the EEOC as a whole has taken on a, a broader approach to uh, discrimination cases and really picking cases that uh, really has the same focus of trying to uh, benefit the most people by shaping the law, but a different approach of trying to shape law that will have an effect on everybody rather than taking on class action 
suits that may may also shape law, but are more likely to shape law um, where there's already a lot of cases and maybe the, the size of the case will, uh, will attract more judicial attention. So as a result of the limited budget and the policy objectives, most cases are not going to fit within um, those parameters and the EEOC will pass on the case. So there's definitely no guarantee that if a case makes it all the way up to conciliation and conciliation fails, that the EEOC is going to file a lawsuit. So definitely don't make that assumption uh, at the beginning of the process and start feeling like a settlement is right around the corner or that you know this government agency is going to take up your cause and be your white knight because the reality is in most cases they're not going to. Um, with that in mind, I think that's a very good reason why it's important to look for and talk to an employment attorney early in the process. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, your attorney is going to know the EEOC process. They're going to know whether that's the right place for you to file a complaint about the discrimination versus a state agency. They're also going to know the kind of information that needs to go into your charge, and that could be important for um, issues that are probably more complex and complicated than what this video needs to discuss. Um, but as well, if the EEOC drops out of your case and issues that right to sue letter, you're only going to have 90 days to file a lawsuit, which means when you get that letter, you're going to have to go out and find an attorney, find an attorney that you want to work with, give them time to investigate your case, prepare a complaint, and then file it in federal court before 90 days are up. Now, 90 days can feel like a long period of time right at the beginning, but you know, you've got other responsibilities in your life and it may be 30 days out and you realize, hey, time is closing in, I've got to act. Well, your attorney is going to want some time to investigate your claims, to figure out who the right defendant is to sue, to make sure that you're being put in the best possible position up front to move forward on your lawsuit and make it as, as successful as possible. So the earlier you get in with an attorney and give them time to understand the facts of your case and to be involved in this process, the better it is for you because you're not going to be stuck scramble, uh, <laughs> scrambling around looking for an attorney and uh, filing a haphazard lawsuit and trying to play catch up. Um, you're put into a much better position being prepared up front and um, giving your attorney plenty of time to help you out. So that's that's pretty much, uh, I think, as much as needs to be discussed in this video uh, without getting into too many details about uh, things that are uh, probably not important to you at this stage. So we'll probably cut it off there um, just to wrap up. Generally, the EEOC is not going to file a lawsuit on your behalf when you file a charge of discrimination, so you should be prepared to move forward on your own whenever they make that decision. And in my opinion, the best way to do that is to go out and hire an employment attorney early in that process and let them help you out from start to finish. So I hope you you found this video useful. Um, I hope I've, I've encouraged you, if you have uh, found yourself in the un unfortunate situation of having experienced uh, employment discrimination to go out and find an employment attorney in your area and let them help you out and uh, do the work with you. So um, that's pretty much it, I guess. No reason to keep beating around it. Um, I hope you found this video useful as, uh, as I do with all the other ones. If you're looking for more information about employment discrimination, feel free to visit my website. A link to it will be in the text below. Uh, there's plenty of other information out there about employment discrimination that may be helpful even if you're outside of the Dallas-Fort Worth area and just trying to figure out uh, what your next steps are if you think you've experienced employment discrimination. So uh, I want to thank you for spending your time listening to the video. Again, I hope it was helpful, and I'll see you next video.